In this video, we are going to learn about the biological macromolecule carbohydrates. You see carbohydrates and consume carbohydrates every day when you eat bread, spaghetti, uh, potatoes, um, and um, also the lettuce that you put into your sandwich have carbohydrates in them. So let's learn about the properties of this class of molecules and what they're made of. What are some of the functions that are provided by carbohydrates? They uh, can be a form of energy storage, and in this case I'm showing a potato just to represent the starch that is present in the potato. Uh, carbohydrates provide structural support not only to plants but also uh, to some uh, insects in the animal kingdom. And the one of the reasons that um, plants are so sometimes seem so tough um, and very strong robust structures is because carbohydrates provide structural support for them. Carbohydrates also play a very important role in cell to cell interaction. This is meant to show the surface of cells and all the different ways that these carbohydrates play a role in uh, helping cells to interact with each other and interact with their environment. The carbohydrates, uh, most of them, uh, are polymers. However, they're also uh, available in uh, individual units, which are called monosaccharides. Now, the larger carbohydrates, the polymers, are actually made by attaching these monomers, monosaccharide, together end over end and over end. So the monomers usually have a molecular formula that follows this pattern. So for each carbon, there's two hydrogens and one uh, oxygen. And this N could be um, any number. So it could be two, then you would have two carbons, four hydrogen and two oxygen. So here are some examples of monosaccharides. Here's glyceraldehyde, dihydroxyacetone. You may recognize the carbonyl functional group in here and also the hydroxyl group. Carbohydrates have a lot of these hydroxyl and carbonyl functional groups. So these are three carbon uh, monosaccharides. We also, this is also glyceraldehyde is also a3 carbon, we have five carbon ones and six carbon ones. Um, and probably one of the um, carbohydrates that you're going to run into a lot in this course is glucose and also ribose. Now we're showing the structure of monosaccharides in line form like this, but actually in solution. Uh, monosaccharides tend to form rings. So what happens um, is that this linear structure closes and forms a ring. Now before I go on, let me, let me explain some things. When you see a structure like this um, and you see corners for which there is no symbol of an atom, it is assumed that these corners represent carbon. So then this glucose has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Same thing here with ribose. You see these corners. So we got one, two, three, four, five. So ribose and ribose is a five carbon sugar. Let's see fructose. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fructose is a six carbon carbohydrate. So anyway, in solution, these monosaccharides form a covalent bond and close the structure into a ring. So this carbon will attach to this oxygen. Now, you may be wondering why some of these lines are thicker, uh, some of them are thinner. Well, that's because this is supposed to represent the fact that this molecule is not flat. It has a structure in the three dimensions. So the lines that are thicker means that this structure is facing towards you and the ones that are thinner are facing away from you. 
So when you look at these molecules, these molecules, don't imagine them as a flat molecule. Imagine them as kind of a tray. This side of it is facing you, and there are either functional groups or atoms that are sticking up or down or below this tray, if you, if you want to think of it that way. So how do we make polysaccharides? How does nature make long chain carbohydrates, which we call polysaccharides? Well, the reaction is pretty much the same as what we've learned before, a dehydration reaction. So we've got glucose in here and a fructose in here. We said during uh, dehydration synthesis reaction, a hydroxyl group is taken from mon one monomer and hydrogen from the other monomer to make water and water is a byproduct. So then what happens? A covalent bond is formed between these two carbohydrate molecules, which we call the glycosidic bond. So then these two monosaccharides now form a disaccharide. Di means two. We have two monosaccharides and makes a disaccharide. So we're attaching glucose and fructose together. We get sucrose, which is that table sugar that you use to put in your coffee. Polysaccharides uh, play a very important role in energy storage. So in your biceps, you can store energy in the form of glycogen, um, such that when you work out, then this glycogen breaks down and then you can use it to fuel your muscles. In plants, as I mentioned before, starch uh, is a form of uh, storage of energy. In one example is, is potato, but all plants uh, make um, carbohydrates in a form of energy storage. So, and you can see that all these, these two types of storage molecules are really long. I'm only showing just a few glucose molecules that are attached to one another, but actually this chain goes for a very, very, very long distance. So does this one. The only difference between starch and glycogen is that glycogen at some points it has branches. But for the most part, they are long chains of carbohydrates and the individual unit is glucose. So these are all glucose molecules that have been attached together through a glycosidic bond. Polysaccharides also, as I mentioned, play a structural support role. So in cellulose, which is the building block of plants which make them really tough and resistant makes um, the bodies of these plants. So cellulose is shown here as a single chain but actually it is a multi-chain molecule. The same thing with chitin. Some insects have an exoskeleton so unlike us where we have our skeleton inside of our bodies they have it outside of their bodies um, and there it's a really um, outside rough material um, and it is made of a carbohydrate called chitin. Now I would like you to stop and compare the structure of cellulose and starch. So starch as I mentioned is a long chain of carbohydrates and it's single chain. There's just one long row. Cellulose on the other hand comes in um, multiple chains. So if you have a cellulose fiber, within this fiber there are chains of cellulose that are held together by hydrogen bonds. So, so these would be each individual cellulose, fiber, cellulose fibers. And that becomes, this whole thing becomes that, that really tough cellulose. So I would like you to compare the structures of cellulose and starch, other than the fact that cellulose is uh, multi-chain. What is it about these two 
polysaccharides that makes one able to make lots of hydrogen bonds and for this one this doesn't happen and uh, come to discussion and let's see what answer you come up with and here's another quiz that you can try and come and see if you got it right